Hi everyone and welcome back. In recent lessons we have been discussing resiliency, stress, development, emotions, confidence, and time management. If you haven't had a chance to check out those lessons, I strongly suggest that you go back and do so. For those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, my name is Lauren. I work for a group in Lancaster, Pennsylvania called Compass Mark. We provide a program called Leaders of Future Generations to uh, several schools in the area. We uh, bring lessons to students who have leadership potential that help them foster those skills and grow as individuals and as leaders. Okay, let's get started. Today, we will be discussing one of my favorite topics to teach on, and that is communication. But first, let's visit our quote of the day. Today's quote comes from a famous playwright, George Bernard Shaw. And George said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Okay, we'll come back to that later. So communication, what does it mean? When I ask this in class, I usually always get the answer, talking. Well, yeah, talking is part of it, but talking is actually only half of it. Um, there are two parts to communication. There is a sender and there is a receiver, or in other words, a speaker and a listener. And it's still not as simple as speaking or listening. There's something that has to exist between these two entities, and that is something called understanding. If there's no understanding between the sender and the receiver, then the message doesn't get across. Just like right now, I am in this room and I'm making this video and I'm sending it out, hoping that someone is receiving my message. If nobody watches this video, then I'm not communicating. I was just talking to my computer screen. Um, if I wrote a letter to a friend and I never mailed it to them, I would not be communicating. There was no understanding between the two of us. Or if I met someone who only spoke French and I only spoke English, then I would be trying to communicate and they might be able to pick up on a couple clues of what I'm trying to say. But bottom line, there isn't really understanding, so it's not really communication. Okay, so communication happens when we send and receive messages and they're understood between the sender and the receiver. So first today we're gonna to talk about sending messages and the different components that we use as individuals to send messages to each other. And I'm not just talking about sending messages like text messages and things, but actually just in person how my body, my mouth, my words sends a message to you and how you receive it. Then we'll talk about receiving messages um, listening skills and, uh, and get into all of that a little bit later. So when we send messages, there are three different components that we use. We use our words, our body language, and our tone of voice. Words are the first thing that most people tell me that they use when they communicate, which is true. We use our words, but surprisingly, our words are the least important part of communicating. Um, this is because when you just get someone's words, you just get the text that they're sending, you don't actually get the body language and the tone of voice, it's really easy for that message to be conveyed as something different. And that can be really unclear and it can lead to a lot of miscommunications, which is when the message doesn't compute, right? When there's no um, understanding between the two parts. So words are very important and we should choose our words wisely. We've learned that since we were little kids. But... There are so much more, more going on with communication than just our words. For example, our body language. Body language is very important. It actually makes up 80% of how we communicate, making it very important. Now, when we think about our body language, it's not just like sending big messages with our whole body, and that's how we should talk all the time, like we're mimes. That'd be cool, but that's not what I mean. When we use our body language, I'm talking about um, your hand gestures, your facial expressions, your eye contact or lack of eye contact, um, even your eyebrows. I have pretty expressive eyebrows, so they can, they can send a message <laughs> with what I'm trying to say. Um, how you hold your shoulders and your weight, how you walk, how you sit, how you stand. There's a lot that goes into our body language. Now, usually when I'm in a classroom, I'll tell the kids that even just the way that they're sitting in their seats right now tells me a story, and it does. And then I see them all adjusting their body language like they did something wrong. And it's not really that you did something wrong, it's just I'm trying to acknowledge for you that yes, what you're doing right now is clear. I'm reading it. I'm reading your body language. Okay, so 
we read people's body language so much and it's so important that it can very easily cause a miscommunication. I mean, imagine I was telling you that I, yes, I'll go to the basketball game with you Friday night. But instead of saying, yeah, I'll go to the basketball game with you Friday night, I said it with my arms crossed and I slumped over and I was frowning at you. Yeah, I'll go to the, the basketball game with you Friday night. Do I really seem like I wanna go? No, okay? So my body language told a completely different story. Um, so to better demonstrate how important body language is, I have a little video of me acting out some phrases. And I want you to try to guess at home what I'm trying to say with each of these body motions. All right, welcome back. I hope you were able to guess some of those right and see how very important it is that we pay attention to our body language. Another thing I like to ask kids is, have you ever gotten in trouble in class or even at home for not paying attention to something when you feel like you were paying attention and then you get really defensive because you're like, I was paying attention, I know what you were saying. Well, why were you called out then? There was probably something that you were doing with your body that portrayed the message that you weren't paying attention. Maybe you were doodling on your paper, maybe you were looking at something different, maybe you weren't making good eye contact or your body was slumped over, whatever it might have been, it's not your teacher or your family's fault that they picked up on that message. It's kind of yours because you're sending that message. So we have to be really aware of the messages that our bodies are sending to other people because like I said, that's what they read and what they, what they get communicated to them more than even the words that we say, okay? So 80%, that's huge, that's a big deal. The next part that's really important is our tone of voice. So you may have, ever, you may have heard someone say, you know, don't use that tone with me, or it's not what you said, it's the way you said it. That's what tone of voice is. It refers to not just what we say, but how we say what we're saying. And it can drastically change the message that we're sending to someone. So think about how we communicate right now. We text, we email, we FaceTime, we use social media, we might use video games. Um, we have in, in-person communication, hopefully still exists out there. And, um, you know, but especially right now when we are kind of all stuck in our homes, we're finding new ways to use technology to communicate with others, which is really cool, it's, it's exciting. Um, but we have to be really clear about the messages that we're sending too, because we could easily have some miscommunications going on right now. Um, now when we use FaceTime, that's great because I get to see their body, I get to hear their tone of voice, and I'm receiving their words. So the chance of a miscommunication on FaceTime is very slim, which is great. However, if we think about um, texting or sending emails or reading things on social media, you don't get any of that. You only get their words. So what ends up happening is we start to interpret it based on how we're feeling or how we think that person is feeling. So we might read it with an attitude or we read it with a certain tone of voice because we're putting our own assumptions onto it. And then we might get all mad about something when in reality, they might not have been trying to make us mad in the first place. Or another good example is if you've ever tried to be sarcastic via text messages, um, sometimes it doesn't work out. And sometimes that person might think that you're being serious. They might not take it the way that you meant it and that might cause a conflict. And that's actually why emojis were invented. Emojis go a really long way. We might think that they're just fun little images that we get to add to our messages, but they were actually created to help us better communicate with our text messages. So. I can send that sarcastic remark with a rolling eye emoji or a laughing emoji, and it's very clear to my receiver that I'm not being serious, right? That that was a joke or that was um, not meant to be taken literally. So our emojis can definitely help us with our tone of voice. 
Um, to demonstrate further how important tone of voice is, I, uh, my, I volunteered my husband to join us um, in this next clip of me saying a simple statement to him, but I'm gonna say it three different ways. And these are statements that we might use pretty often. The first one is, um, can you help me with this? And the second one is, I'm sorry. And I wanted to use I'm sorry because this is a big one and I hear this a lot, especially from kids, is um, you know they might be told to go apologize to someone or they might just know that they need to apologize and then you go and you apologize to that person, but you don't say it genuinely. You say it with an attitude. And if you do that, then that's what the person is receiving. They're not hearing that you're actually sorry. They're hearing that you were told to say sorry or that you feel obligated to do it and you don't actually mean it. So your message, you're sending a completely different message. And that has to be really clear, especially in those vulnerable situations like when you're apologizing to someone. Okay, so check out the video and um, hopefully you'll better understand how important tone of voice is. Can you help me with this? Yes. Can you help me with this? Yeah, I guess. Can you help me with this? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, welcome back. So now we are gonna focus on the other side of things, which is receiving messages or listening. Listening skills might seem pretty self-explanatory and pretty easy, but actually a lot of people don't, uh, don't use them well all the time. So we have to focus on what it means to be a good active listener. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone who was texting or acting bored or constantly interrupting you? How did that make you feel? it probably made you feel like what you said didn't matter to them and like you weren't very important. So there's three types of listening that I'm gonna walk you through today. The first kind I like to call distracted listening, when you're not actually paying any attention. So this is a person who, you know, they're physically in the space where they could be listening to someone, but instead of doing so, they're texting or they're watching TV or reading something or thinking about something else and just not at all paying attention to what the speaker is trying to send them. And this often causes a lot of miscommunications because that receiver doesn't remember the stuff that was said. I mean, that's pretty frustrating too, right? You tell somebody a story and the next time you bring it up, they have no idea what you're talking about because they weren't listening. They might have heard you, but they weren't listening. That's more active, it takes a more active um, energy to be able to do that. The next type of listening is called overactive listening. So overactive listening, or like I like to call it overactive listening, is when someone just listens to respond. And that's a big problem we have nowadays in general. We all like to share a lot about ourselves and we're used to that sharing with social media and everything else. But when someone is trying to talk to you and tell you something, it's your job to be the receiver and to receive the message. It's not your job to take over and dominate the conversation. So overactive listening is when people listen just to pick up on something that they can respond to. And this can be a big problem because we tend to think that we are being a really good listener. We're like, oh, but I, I kept the convo going and I, 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 you know, gave my input and we were, we were having a great conversation. But when you think back on it, did you actually listen to what they were saying? Did you actually respond to what they wanted you to respond to? Or did you just share your own information? So that's overactive listening. The best one, ding, 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 is active listening. So an active listener pays close attention to the speaker they're fully engaged in the conversation and they use their body language to show that. So a couple things is we might nod our heads. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. Or you might lean in. Oh yeah, totally. And you're really paying attention. Okay. You're showing them with eye contact that you are watching them, that you're really um, engaged in what they're saying. And here's a big one. You ask questions. So it doesn't end when they're done talking. Actually, that feels really weird. Has that ever happened to you where you 
tell someone something and there's just crickets and nothing <laughs> feels like, why did I just say that? Was I just talking for my own benefit? Like, no, I'm trying to share something with you. So to show that you're really engaged and that you're really listening, you want to be able to ask questions. And you should be able to summarize what they said to you when, when you're done. You should be able to remember at least key details of what was told to you. So you ask follow-up questions to show that you're really interested in it. So to demonstrate listening skills, um, we're going to see uh, Donovan once again with me. I'm going to ask him a question about what he did last weekend and show you the three different types of listening. So pay close attention and see if you can figure out what happened at home. So um, what did you do last weekend? Well, last weekend I uh, went to the store and got a bunch of groceries and uh, then I came home and I was working on some stuff on my computer mm -hmm. and um, then I took the car out to get washed and uh, Uh, are you listening to me? Wait, did you say something? <laughs> so, um, what'd you do last weekend? Well, last weekend, it was uh, pretty busy. I went to... Dude, I was so busy. I had, like, a couple meetings over the weekend, and I had to go to the grocery store because, like, we had no food, and I had to go, um, oh, we went hiking. Yeah, remember we went hiking, and there were, like, a lot of people there, but it was so busy. I felt like I couldn't even get a second to myself. Like, it didn't even feel like a weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Right? So what did you do last weekend? Uh, last weekend was pretty busy. I uh, went to the mall and went shopping and got a new pair of pants. Oh. Cool. And uh, then I went out to eat, um, went to Iron Hill. It's a really great spot to go. Oh, what did you get to eat? Uh, I got a burger mm. and some fries. That sounds good. Yes, and I got a Coke to drink. Oh, okay. It was really delicious. And uh, yeah, then I came home and I had to do a bunch of work on the computer mm -hmm. um so i worked on the weekend as well um, as having fun but maybe i'll be able to do some more things uh next weekend instead of working sure okay yeah sounds like you're a little frustrated you had a lot of work to do but hopefully these, this weekend will be a little more open for you yeah i think so cool great well thank you so much for sharing you're welcome <laughs> okay welcome back so as you might have gathered from that the first time i was using passive listening I was texting, I wasn't paying attention, and although he was a trooper and he kept talking for a little bit, eventually he got the feeling like I wasn't paying attention. And he actually got so fed up that he stopped. And he was like, are you even listening to me? Because let's face it, I wasn't. The second time I used overactive listening, where I heard the word busy and I could relate to it, so I immediately started talking. And I started sharing about my own weekend. And now when I got done talking, I felt, I felt like we were having a conversation and we were both really engaged. But the truth is I was engaged, I was over-engaged, and I wasn't actually listening to what he had to say at all. I didn't even let him finish his sentence. So that wasn't good. And that was not showing him respect in any way. The third time I used active listening, I let him finish his sentences, I showed that I was engaged, and then when he was done talking, I asked him a follow-up question. And I was able to learn that he went to the mall, he bought himself some pants, he went to Iron Hill and he ate a hamburger, and that he had a pretty busy weekend, so he's looking forward to this weekend being a little more open and relaxed. And I can tell you all that because I listened and I heard it. So it's very important as a communicator that we are able to communicate our messages very clear and direct, but we also can receive messages in a way that it stays with us and it shows that we really did pay attention. When it comes to being a leadership, <laughs> leader, I mean, <laughs> communication is so important. It's so important. It is the key to being a good leader. You need to be able to convey your message to a group and to be able to do it in a compelling and influential way. Your body language and your words and your tone of voice all have to match each other so that what you're saying is very believable and captivating. But also we should understand that communication is like the biggest issue when it comes to working with a team or in any kind of job setting or even working on like a project at school with a group. Communication is the number one barrier when it comes to working effectively. It's important to be aware of 
your team and where the communication gaps might be and how you could possibly fix them. So you have to be thinking about that as well. If you ever find that a message you send was miscommunicated or was received incorrectly, don't let your first thought be that that person was was not paying attention or that they, um, I don't know, don't know any better so they, they took your message wrong. Try to reflect for yourself, was it something that you did or is there a way that you could have better communicated that to them? Listening is also very, very important as a leader. If your team members don't feel like you're hearing them or like you don't care about what they have to say or what they think, they're going to lose respect for you really fast. Um, they need to be valued and empowered as team members. And it's your job as their leader to help, help bring that out of them and really make your group as successful as it possibly could be. Okay, so let's take a look back at that quote from George Bernard Shaw. George said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. When we think we have communicated something correctly, but we didn't, this can lead to major misunderstandings that can get really out of hand and they can actually turn into conflicts and fights sometimes over something that was really just a miscommunication. That if we had been a little clearer or we had double checked that person understood us correctly or we had listened better, then that communication, that conflict may have never happened and that communication might have been able to be successful. So like George said, you know, one of the biggest problems is the illusion that we, we think it took place. We think we were successful, so we don't revisit it or we don't ask any follow-up questions. When in reality, that could have been a miscommunication and we might need to make sure that everyone understood. So for your discussion questions at home, I strongly suggest that you um, engage with the people in your house or with friends or even with me. If you want to put your answers in the comment section below, I would love to converse with you and have a communication on your discussion questions. So for number one, when was the last time you had a miscommunication and what caused it? Okay. Number two. How do you show someone you are listening to them? So we're all different and some of us use our bodies a lot to show that we're listening, but what do you do to make sure that the person talking to you knows that you're listening? And number three, how can working on your communication skills make you a better leader? Okay. Now for your at-home activity. This is a fun one, can get a little frustrating. Uh, you need to do this with at least a partner or maybe a couple people at home if you can. You could even try to do this um, over FaceTime with a friend. Uh, but one of you is gonna have a blank piece of paper and the other person is going to pick some kind of image. And you wanna make it something you know kind of simple like a dog or a tree or a football or something like that. And um, the person with the image is going to describe it to the other person. Um, try not to use words that are too obvious and just describe it. You want the other person to be able to recreate your image as best they can. So you have to really be clear and direct with what you're saying. For round one, I don't want you to let that other person ask you any questions. So you're not going to answer anything that they, they might ask you to help clarify what they're trying to draw. Then for round two, they can ask questions and you can have an actual communication about it. It'll be really interesting for you to see which version is most effective and which time they get the drawing um, closer to what you were picturing. Um, because when we can actually have a back and forth and listen and answer questions, it usually ends up being more effective. Then I'd like you to switch roles and give yourself the opportunity to hear someone else's description and try to make that image yourself. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoy the at-home activity and I hope you've enjoyed this lesson on communication. In our next lesson, we'll be focusing on the three different communication styles. So taking this a, a step further to see how we use our skills to communicate our personalities and what we're thinking and feeling. Um, well, I hope you all are well, that you're safe, and I will see you soon.